earlier today on Squawk on the Street. He spoke about bringing back the Lincoln Continental. Back in the heyday, Lincoln Continental defined sedans in the 50s and 60s. And that's exactly what we want to do with this new uh, Continental concept. And for us, it signals what we call quiet luxury, which is about elegance. It's around effortless power. It's around a serene and relaxing interior, a place you can chill. So what we want for this vehicle is to be an extremely successful vehicle in that segment. By the way, tomorrow, General Motors is introducing its new Cadillac CTS. So the question is, can the U.S. automakers recapture the luxury market that has been owned in Europe and Asia all this time? Joining us now, Lauren Fix, the car coach, and Alec Gutierrez, senior market analyst at Kelly Blue Book. Good to see you both. Thank you for joining us today. Lauren, I think I've seen this movie before. U.S. <laughs> automakers once again trying to come up with a luxury model that will compete effectively with BMWs in the Mercedes of this world. you think they can pull this off? Well, Cadillac's making a bid for that more so than Lincoln. I mean, they're talking about performance, and they're talking about the, you know, they've got the ATS-V. Everything's got a V on it, which means performance. But you know what? The Germans really have a big, strong hold when it comes to performance. I mean, you're looking at their RS and their S lineups or their AMGs or their M power, and now you're going to add in Cadillac. They may have the performance, but they need to have that style, that class, that polish that take, that's not really there with that chiseled look. So we'll see what Johan de Nessen can do. But with Lincoln, it's all about elegance. And there's no one in that space. That space, as far as I'm concerned, has been sort of left to Lincoln. And they've really done a beautiful job on this Continental, inside and out, with 30 weight power seats and nothing but the best. Alec, would you agree that there's nobody in this space? It's wide open for Lincoln to take? I think there's opportunity there, but I do think that uh, Lincoln will face the same challenges that Cadillac has in trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Germans. I mean, I think that when you look at the luxury space, it's all about prestige, it's all about reputation, and Mercedes and BMW at this point, and even Audi for that matter, have a huge head start over Cadillac and Lincoln, who've been floundering for a lot of years until maybe the last three to five years. So I think, I think there's potential there, to be honest. I think the Continental looks fantastic. I think they've done a great job with it. Uh, it could perhaps shake things up to some degree, but I think they'll have to focus on elegance like they have, and even technology for that matter, which uh, is, is a space that is still ripe for innovation. Who's going to buy the Lincoln, though? Uh, Lauren, I've, uh, I've got some research here, and I, I'll be frank. I don't know who put this together, but there's some speculation that the Lincoln, with all the amenities that they are hoping to put in there, could cost as much as $100,000. You put that up against an S-Class and the Mercedes. You put it up against the 7 uh, BMW 7 Series. I mean, are they actually thinking they're going to be able to compete effectively with those uh, models? Well, you're actually getting into Bentley territory at that point, too. Right. And you're talking about the premium, where you've still done, you're pulling into Land Rover and Jaguar. The Brits have done some and rolls and made some beautiful cars there. But when you're talking about a $100,000 car, I think they're looking for the big chunk of their sales to be in China. That's going to be a big thing. They love to say they're driving an American car. And to say they're driving, you know, driving a Lincoln or being driven in a Lincoln at this level with this type of technology with the LEDs, you know, you know, Alex is right. It has to be about the heritage. It has to be about where you stand in positioning. But the... I'm waiting to see what Cadillac actually has to put out because power is great, but style... It's coming in and out, Lauren's so audio is our apologies. Alec, uh, to you then, is this all about their positioning in China? Because uh, the question we pose is whether this will be a hit with the U.S. consumer. Perhaps these guys are really looking past that. Uh, realistically, yes. I mean, I have to, they, you have to know that they're thinking about China. Uh, that, that's an area where Cadillac, Buick for that matter, has done very well. Lincoln has done quite well in China. So that's a natural fit for a vehicle like this with that kind of price tag. Now, that's not to say that uh, Lincoln and, and Cadillac, for that matter, is willing to give up the U.S. market. Clearly, they want to have a strong presence here. They want to own. They want to dominate that market. But I think they have to go into it knowing that $100,000 is, is not something to... Uh, not something to overlook. I think buyers in this market are very savvy. They know they have options, whether you're talking a, a BMW 7 Series, even a Tesla Model S, again, kind of going right. back to the technology and some of the innovation that's out there. Right. It, it is a crowded market space at that price point. It's going to be really tough to, uh, to make an impact. All right. Alec, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Lauren, I, I, I see you back there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Sorry you. about the audio uh, interruption there as well. By the way, a friend of mine, his father had a Lincoln Continental. Uh, it was the coolest car back in the 19th.